So dynamic equilibrium. <coughs> so we, we understand reaction rates generally increase with increasing reactant concentration. So if we look at this reaction, we've got hydrogen and iodine reacting, and they're forming hydrogen iodide. Um, the forward reaction will be faster if the hydrogen concentration and or the iodine concentration is higher. A reversible reaction like this can proceed in both the forward and the reverse directions. As the initial, you know, let's say at the beginning we've got hydrogen, we've got iodine, and we have no product. So at the beginning, there is no hydrogen iodide. The reverse reaction cannot occur because there's nothing to, to come apart. There's no HI. So initially, you have a fast forward reaction with the hydrogen and the iodine reacting. And as those reactants react, the uh, concentration of them goes down. Right? So the concentration of the reactants goes down. What happens to the rate of the forward reaction? It slows down. As we make the product HI, its concentration now is going up. What happens to the rate of the reverse reaction? It goes faster. It increases. So what happens is this will occur until the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are equal. And then the relative concentrations are going to remain constant even though reaction is occurring in both directions. So in this illustration, we have um, that reaction between hydrogen and iodine occurring um, over time. And since the pointer's broken, I will just have to use the meter stick and point at the screen. Sorry, you two people. So at the beginning, we have all reactant. There's no product. So here is the forward reaction. We see the concentration of iodine is going to be decreasing. The concentration of hydrogen is going to be decreasing because the forward reaction proceeds. Initially, there's no hydrogen iodide, and so its reaction cannot occur. As these uh, molecules react and form some product, now we can have some of the reverse reaction occurring. So we're forming product, and as we form more and more product, that reverse reaction gets faster and faster. So what happens is, at a particular point, we will get to a place where the concentration of the product and the concentration of the individual reactants are not changing. Because the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. And so even though reactions are occurring, if, if you're just looking at the reaction, you can't see all that happening. It looks like nothing's happening. It's a dynamic equilibrium, but there's stuff going back and forth. Questions? Does that help? Yeah. How, do you, how can you tell if it's a reversible reaction? Um, yeah, you kind of just have to do the experiment and find out. Um, most reactions are at least very, very slightly reversible. But some are not. So that's, yeah, we're not going to worry about identifying which, which ones are. We're just going to look at the ones that are and see what happens. Yeah. So once they reach dynamic equilibrium, they no longer react, or they they continue to react. They continue to react. So I think of a dynamic equilibrium as being a little bit like a busy airport. Okay, so in the middle of the day, if you were to count the people inside the airport, say every 15 minutes, that le the number of people would probably be relatively constant. But you have planes coming and bringing people in, and you have planes leaving and taking people out. You also have people coming by car, bus, train, whatever, and leaving the same way. So it's not the same people in the airport that whole time, but it's the same number of people. Like because the exchange. rate, yeah, it's an even exchange. The rate of people leaving and the rate of people coming in is the same. So there's a lot going on. It just doesn't look like it. The concentrations are going to remain constant, but reaction is occurring in both directions.
So dynamic equilibrium is the condition in which the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. We have both of those reactions occurring. Concentrations aren't changing, but we cannot say that they are equal to each other. It does not mean that the concentration of reactants and products is equal. They could be equal, but that's unusual. They are just not changing anymore. The relative concentrations, whether you've got more products or more reactants or 50-50, depends on the value of the equilibrium constant. And that is something that we just measure experimentally. We're not going to worry right now about, well, what affects that? We're just going to look at it. So here's the book's analogy. <coughs> And um, in this chapter, he's calling it country A and country B. Um, in, I don't know if it's another book or if it's just in the earlier part of this, he called one of them Narnia and one of them Middle Earth. And I thought that was a lot more fun. So that's what I'm going to call them. So you've got, you've got Narnia and you've got Middle Earth. And originally this, the, the, the border there is closed. No immigration is possible. And so there's a higher population here in Narnia, and there's a low concentration of people, a low population in Middle Earth. So when we open the border, we say, OK, yeah, we're going to let you guys go back and forth as you wish. No restrictions. So initially, it's, it's almost exclusively people moving from Narnia to Middle Earth, because there's a lot of people over here. There's only a few people over here, and so the rate of them moving back to country A is going to be extremely small, right, moving back to Narnia. As this goes on, we'll come to a point of equilibrium where the rate of people moving from Narnia to Middle Earth is equal to the rate of people moving from Middle Earth to Narnia. That does not mean that you have equal populations in the two countries. Which one does it look like there's more of? It kind of looks the same, doesn't it? What, what would affect or what would cause one country to have a higher population density than a neighboring country? Space available, right? If, if there's land for the taking like there was in the American West, you know, you just had to go out and stake your claim, that caused a flood of people to come out, right? Free land, wow. Compare, especially compared to a country where everything is tied up and you've got your little patch of farmland and you can't expand, you're just limited. Other things like the climate, you know, a nice climate, people are going to go live there. Um, economic prosperity, political freedom, all sorts of things could affect that, right? So the number of people in either country, you know, Middle Earth could be much, much larger population than Narnia, but we can still have an equilibrium of people moving back and forth. Any questions? Does that help clarify the situation a little bit? <laughs> <laughs>